مرحبا. Okay, so we learned previously uh, several methods or strategies of proving mathematical statements. We learned uh, how to tackle a universal statement. We learned how to prove a conditional statement via a direct proof or proof by contraposition, how to prove uh, a statement by contradiction, and how to prove by conditional statements and or how to show equivalences. But uh, usually in everyday mathematics, when we have a statement, we don't know whether it's true or false. Like when we prove it, it means we showed that it is true. But what if the statement that we are trying to prove is false to begin with? Okay, so uh, let's have a, an example on this situation. So we want to discuss, for example, uh, some universal statements might be false. So uh, let's uh, consider, so consider say a general a universal statement of the form, consider a universal statement of the form for every element in the domain X, X has the property P. Now we said, if we want to prove it is true, we choose an arbitrary element X and we show using the axioms, the previous theorems, the rules of inference that X has property P. But what does, but maybe this statement is false. So what does it mean for this statement is false? So this statement is false means not every element in the domain has property uh, P, which means, means there exists an element, let's call it C, in the domain which does not have the property p so such that not p of c or if you want that p of c is false so here is the picture this is say the domain and we have elements in the domain this statement for all x p of x is false means there is at least one element in the domain say let's call it c which doesn't have the property p okay so c doesn't have property p and we rem remember that we call this c a counter example it's called a counter example Okay, so let's let's have an example on this. So consider the following statement for any positive integer p if so now we want the statement says any positive integer p has the following property and this property is a conditional statement. If P is prime, okay, then two to the P minus one is also prime. Then two to the P minus one is also prime. Okay, so this is the property. Let me highlight it in yellow. So this is the property that we want to prove it holds for uh, every element in the domain or not so here let's uh, so here what is the domain so this is our domain and we talk about a positive integer so one two three four five and so on and remember what does it mean for an in, uh, an integer to be prime it means that the only positive divisors of it is uh, are one and itself so is is it true that every positive integer for every positive integer p, if p is prime, then two to the p minus one is prime? Is this statement, this conditional statement, this property holds for all the elements in the domain? Well, notice that we don't need to check to check it for all the elements in the domain because if we only need to check it for prime numbers. Okay, so let me let me say why so we need we need only to check it for two three five 
seven and so on. We don't need to check it for eight, for example. So why is this? Because, okay, I missed the six. We don't need to check it for six. Why we don't need, because if say, if you choose four, then is four prime? No, it is four is not prime. So this is false. And we know that a condition statement with a false hypothesis is true. It's automatically true by definition of the truth table of condition statement. So we don't need to check it for uh, non-prime numbers or what we call composite numbers. It's enough to check it for a prime number. So let's start checking if, if the state, either we prove it, we write down a proof, or we can start like a brute force test and see if, if, we, if we can find an element where this property is false. So let's start. Uh, let's start with the first prime number, which is two. So when P is two, we know two to the two minus one is four minus one, which is three, which is prime. Okay, so here the conclusion two to the P minus one is true because three is prime. Now let's check it when P is three. So when P is three, this is a, a true hypothesis. So this three is prime. Now, is it is the conclusion true? Two to, let's check it. Let's see. Two to the power three minus one is eight minus one, which is seven, which is prime. Okay, now what is the next prime? It's five. Okay, so when P is five, then this is true because five is prime. Is the conclusion true? So let's check. Two to the five minus one is 32 minus one, which is 31 and 31 is a prime number. Okay, now let's check it for next prime, which is seven. So when P is seven, then two to the seven minus one is equal to 128 minus one, which is 127, and this is prime. So, so far, so good. Now, what is the next prime? Well, eight is not prime, nine is not, 10 is not, 11 is. So let's test it for 11. Now, what happens when we choose P to be 11, then this is two to the 11 minus one is equal to 2048 minus one, which is equal to 2047. Okay, now 2047 is not prime because 23 is a divisor because 2047 is equal to 23 times 89. Okay, so this is not prime. So let's see, this is, we call this a counter example, notice so, so when P is 11, so when P is 11, then 11 is prime, so this is true. But we've seen that two to the 11 minus one is not, is uh, 2047 and this is not prime, so this is false. And we know true implies false is false. So we found the P where this property, whole condition statement is false. So 11, 11 is a counter example to the universal statement. Remember the universal statement says for every positive integer P, this whole property is true. If P is prime, then two to the P minus one is prime. But why 11 is a counter example because 11 is prime, so this is a true, the true hypothesis of the conditional statement, but two to the 11 minus one, which is 2047 is not prime. And this shows that the conclusion is false, okay? So it, it turns out that this statement is a false statement. Okay, it's, we, we, it means uh, there's no point of trying to prove it because it is false. It is not true that if P is prime, then two to the P minus one is prime. A counter example is the number 11. It is prime, but two to the 11 minus one is not a prime.